Well, I hope you're all having a pleasant day, my lovelies. Welcome back to Fallout 4. Now, before we get into it, I would like to mention that there will be some changes to the channel, most probably happening around New Year. Out with the old and in with the new, I guess. But changes will include how I do some of the Fallout content and maybe even a channel name change, but that one's not definite yet. So, with that being said, let's take a look at a few mods. First up is Molotov Man by Drew Bertelman 13. This is a weapon that's sure to put a smile on your face, and all you have to do to find it is head to just outside Vault 111, and you'll notice it inside a toolbox along with some 10mm ammo and an experimental MIRV, or at least that's what I got anyway. The MIRV is actually vanilla, so I'm unsure as to why the mod author chose to put one, or in this case, two, inside the toolbox. Created by a wasteland wanderer suffering at the hands of heavy fat man ammo, this uses 10mm ammo, a very common type in the wasteland indeed, to create an all-out Molotov cocktail launching machine. I think it's quite funny that it uses 10mm ammo and yet creates a glass bottle that will then set your opponent ablaze. It does have quite good range, but like the normal fat man, make sure not to stand too close to whatever you're about to obliterate. It also has a very good fire rate, meaning you can constantly pump out fiery death until your heart's content. Now we have Forgotten Allies by Grimeblade, and yes, this takes us back once again to Vault 111. This time, however, we have to venture inside and find the toolbox containing 50 spawning grenades that, once thrown, will spawn Vault Security Allies, should we ever need a little help. All the spawn security teams seem to just use the one NPC model, and all seem to carry scattered laser rifles. Just like companions, they will follow you anywhere and begin to attack an enemy on sight. To me, it didn't seem as if these allies had very good defence, since after the scorpion fight, I ended up with only one left after spawning around four to five of them. But in fairness, we did fight a legendary one. All in all, a very good tool to have at your disposal for when you're in distress and needing some bailing out. Our third and final mod, to me, is a work of art and located here in the glowing sea. This is Zugurat, The Rise of Lick by Murasi and chances are I have pronounced none of that correctly. This adds an epic looking flooring fortress to the game and also doubles as quite the nifty player home. This is a nod to the Necropolis from the Warcraft series. Once you spot it in the sky you will also notice a giant horde of glowing ghouls known as the Risen Thrall. Now if you're lucky enough to defeat these tough bastards you can then confront what appears to be their master, Savarath the Black who has enormous strength and defence, but when killed can be found to hold the crown of the Necrocon, which has a damage resist of 32 and adds 2 to intelligence and perception, and is worth a staggering 1100 caps. He also holds a plasma sword known as Undodlik, that has a damage of 900 and worth even more staggering 10,000 caps. Inside the floating fortress there are a lot of corridors that resemble the hell levels from Doom 2016, but with a green glow from what seems to look like an awful lot of radioactive material. It's designed with everything the player could ever need in a base of operations, from workbenches to cooking stations as well as as much ammo as you can stuff in your pockets. This is an extremely well-built mod, and if there's one thing to notice is that not once did I crash or lose any frames while this place was floating in the sky in the glowing sea. That alone deserves a massive round of applause. Well, that's it for now. As usual, all the links are in the description, and remember, one of the changes this channel may go through is a name change. So if you spot a channel name in your sub box that doesn't look familiar, it may just be me. Thanks again for watching, have an amazing day.